Hey you guys, C here and thank you so much for joining me in today's video. So today I'm going to be discussing everything that you need to know about Hoyas. What's the 411? What's the T on this genus of houseplants? Now you're probably familiar with some Hoyas. There's the Hoya carnosa. Uh, this is a crimson queen. Uh, there's also the crimson princess. Um, you may have heard of the Hoya carnosa compacta right here uh, or a Hindu rope plant. There is the Hoya carii, that's the heart-leafed plant, um, Hoya obovata, Hoya pubicalix, Hoya australis. Um, so you've probably heard of those. I'm not going to go into specific detail about those plants. Instead, I'm going to be discussing the genus of Hoya because it's relatively the same care across the board. What makes the Hoyas such a great house plant is that they're forgiving, they are fast growing, and they're very easy to maintain. Common names for this genus is a wax plant, wax vine, wax flower, or simply Hoya. Now it's known as a wax flower, wax whatever, because it has thick waxy leaves. Now the Hoyas are really unique because they are a combination of a succulent and a vining plant. So they look like tropical plants, but they like to dry out like succulents. That's really key. We'll touch on that a little later in the video when we're discussing water. But not only does it have thick waxy leaves, it also blooms star-shaped flowers. This is a really dope plant. Let's get into the detail. Let's kick things off with number one. Let's discuss light. Hoyas are so unique because they can tolerate a large variety of light conditions. So you can put it in a lower light situation, a medium light situation, but as most house plants, it is going to thrive in bright indirect sunlight. I would not put this in a dark corner. Um, medium to bright light is going to be best. Now, if you have it in a lower light situation, that's no problem. Once again, try your very best to avoid dark corners unless you're supplementing light. We'll get into that in just a second. Um, but if you put it in a lower light situation, don't expect it to bloom. It's going to bloom when you give it great warmth and great sunlight. Now, for those of us who live in darker areas, darker rooms, um, those of us who don't get enough natural sunlight, definitely consider artificial light. Definitely consider supplementing natural light with grow lights. I'll link the ones that I have down below. These plants do really great under artificial light. But keep in mind, like most flowering plants, the more sunlight you give it, the more likely it will bloom and the more often it will bloom. Number two, let's talk about water. So this plant has low water needs. As I mentioned earlier, it performs very similar to a succulent. So it wants to dry all the way out. It does not like wet feet. It does not need wet feet. Make sure that you have drainage holes. Make sure that all the water is draining out when you give it a good watering. Now, because it has these thick waxy leaves, as I mentioned, it, it does hold water, but it's also forgiving. So if you forget to water it once or twice, it's not a problem, it'll bounce back. Now, a sign that it's been underwater is when the leaves start to crinkle. And actually, you can see that. I'll do a close up on one of my Hoya Carnosa Compacta. It is shriveling up a little bit because it's missed. <laughs> It's missed the watering, but it's okay. Like I said, it's really forgiving. Give it a good drink. Make sure that it drains all the way out. Make sure that it's not sitting in water and it'll bounce back. It'll get some life back into its leaves and it'll be good. One major key about Hoyas is that they perform better when they're drier than wet. So if you're heavy handed with the water, dial it back. Um, the type of pot that you have it potted in will actually help you when it comes to water and we'll touch on that in just a few. Make sure you stick around. The last tidbit on watering is keeping in mind that you run the risk of root rot if the potting mix stays too wet for an extended period of time. Number three is humidity. Now these plants are gonna do great. They're gonna do fine in average household humidity. Now for your drier areas, if you wanna boost it up to about 40%, that's no problem. 40 to 60% is a good range. Now having a humidifier to boost the humidity in the winter months when it's drier is key. It's not necessary, but it definitely will help your plant thrive. I have my humidifiers pushing about 60 to 65% at this time of the year because my humidity here in January is hitting about 35 to 40% on a good day. 
Um, so I use my humidifiers to supplement the humidity, give it a little bit of boost. And I think that my plants love it. They all seem to take off and do really well. Once again, your regular household humidity will be fine. It doesn't need it, but it is a tropical plant, so it is helpful. I will link the humidifiers that I use in my home down below. If you're not interested in humidifiers or that's not an option for you, you can always consider a pebble tray that's very inexpensive and equally as effective. Um, you can also do the misting. I'm not a fan of misting your plant. Not only is that humidity fleeting, I'm talking about the humidity will drop in 10, 20 minutes. But if you don't have good air circulating, you can run the risk of fungus or bacteria on the leaves of your plants. So I try to steer away from misting. When I first got into the house plant game, I definitely missed it every day, multiple times a day. It's a lot of work. It's not as effective kind of a waste of time no offense um try a pebble tray instead if you don't want to get a humidifier okay number four is temperature now ideal temperature for these plants because they are tropical plants is 60 to 85 degrees fahrenheit keep this plant away from cool drafts and direct air and you'll be good to go Next on the list is fertilization. Now for best results, I use an organic all-purpose fertilizer. I use it every time I water my plants with my Hoyas because they resemble succulents and they like to dry all the way out. I don't water my Hoyas any more than maybe two weeks. Mm, yeah, maybe two weeks. Yeah, maybe two weeks. Okay, um, so I use an all-purpose organic fertilizer for every watering. It is diluted with water. It is very gentle. It's safe on your plants. I have never experienced any plant burn, um, any damage. As a matter of fact, I've been using this one particular product for over three years now. So I swear by it. I love it. It does have a tiny bit of a smell, but it does go away. I'll link it down below. I hope you enjoy it. One major key when it comes to fertilization is when you are fertilizing these houseplants and you give them great warmth and good sunlight, they flower more. So when it comes to blooming or flowering, fertilization is key. Toxicity. This is a dope plant because it is non-toxic to humans and pets. So if you have some children or some pets that are a little curious, it is okay if this is ingested. It will not cause any harm. Number seven, potting mix. Potting mix is crucial when it comes to your Hoyas. Once again, I cannot stress this enough, this plant resembles a succulent, so drainage is incredibly important. You wanna make sure that these plants are not retaining any additional water, that all the water that the roots suck up, what water that they need, and the rest flows right on out. You should give it soil that drains excess water. You can use a cactus and succulent mix, or you can create your own. I create my own mix for my Hoyas. I use 50% potting mix, 40% perlite, and 10% sand. It's important that the soil stays nice and light because that allows oxygen to flow to your Hoya roots freely. Because of which I think terracotta and ceramic pots are best. I am holding a plastic nursery pot, so disregard that. Let's grab this one. So because of which I recommend terracotta or ceramic pots because they aid in the oxygen flowing to your Hoya roots freely. <laughs> Hoyas like to be root bound. So they like to be cramped up in their pot. So make sure that you're not putting it in an overly large pot. This is a five inch pot. And until I see roots coming out of the drainage hole, I'm gonna keep this, this plant in this pot for quite a long time. And same with the Hindu ropes. So these are, what are these? Four inch pots, maybe two inch. And they're gonna stay in here for a long time. Now this Hindu rope, I've had this one going on three years. This is very slow growing. <laughs> this is very slow growing, so don't judge me. It's in great condition, it looks good, but this one in particular grows slow. And this one I've had for, well I'll be, I've had this one for almost two years and still. These are one of the slower growing Hoyas. So if you're looking for something fast, 
consider all the other ones. <laughs> Now, let's talk about troubleshooting. So if you have wrinkling leaves, it's a sign of three things, which not going to be very helpful, but wrinkling leaves is a sign of overwatering, underwatering, or low humidity. Number two, if your Hoya is not blooming, then that means you are not mimicking the environment that it is native to. It is ideal that it is warm enough, 60 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. It is ideal that it is bright enough, bright indirect light, no direct sunlight. And it needs to have a boost of humidity. So at least 40%, 40 to 60% is going to be great. However, if you are mimicking its native environment and it's still not blooming, it may not be mature enough. Some Hoyas can take five to seven years to bloom. So just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. Lastly, we're going to discuss propagation. Now, the easiest way to propagate your Hoyas is to do stem cuttings. So you want to cut at the node. The node is where leaves grow from the stem. You want to cut at the node and pop it in water. They are moderately fast to root up. So if you are changing out your water at least once a week, then you probably should see roots in about three to four weeks. Once those roots are one to two inches long, go ahead and pot them up and you'll have a new plant, baby. Whew. Okay, that was a mouthful. I think that's it. Is that it? I think that's it. Well, you guys, I think that's it. I think I have touched on the basics. I think I've given you everything that you need to know. I hope this video was helpful. If so, definitely consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing because I have plenty of plant profiles posted and plenty of plant profiles coming your way. So when I grabbed all my Hoyas, I was actually surprised that I only have three. Now, I have given a few away, but still... Only having three is not like me. So I definitely need to add a few more to my collection. If you have some Hoyas in your collection or some Hoyas that you're familiar with that I need to add to my collection, definitely comment down below. Let me know what I need to shop for. I think I want to get a Hoya Obovada and a Puba Calyx pretty soon. Um, and I think I know just the plant nursery in my area to get that from. So Definitely let me know what I'm missing. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for rocking with me. As always, I love you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.